This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today I am here with the Cuisinart COS 330 electric smoker. Now this is a 30 inch base electric smoker, so it is 30 inches on the cabinet, and there is three shelves in it, so it has a total square area of 548 inches of cooking area. Now, in the last video, I assembled it, and that was a super simple process. I almost considered merging the two videos like I normally do, but for other reasons, I wanted to keep these videos separate. I went ahead and let the smoker cool back off from the initial test to make sure the electric worked, and I read the directions. It says to remove the water pan, and then it says do not use flavored wood chips. I'm going to ignore that, so just bear with me here. And then two, it says, could all the interior surfaces of the smoker cabinet, side racks, and cooking grill with vegetable oil or vegetable oil spray. Do not coat the electric element. Typically, I would say that you should probably put a piece of tin foil in there, and I think I have a scrap piece that I might just throw in there just for this process. Then it says to plug it in. And then it says to cure the smoker for two hours, then unplug the smoker. It doesn't really tell you what temperature to set it at, but it's my experience that we need to be slightly above 275 to get a good cure on this. So we will monitor that and make sure that we're where we need to be. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back out. and see if I can find a piece of scrap tin foil. So I had a couple of these pull out sheets just sitting over there. So I decided I'd go ahead and grab those and temporarily I'm just gonna lay them in here on top of the element. We don't need it secured or anything. We just wanna cover the element completely so that way no oil gets directly on it by accident. Now, if you wanted to wipe it down, you could apply oil and then you could wipe it in there like that all over. Now I'm just gonna wipe this down and get a little bit of this manufacturing dust out of here. Well, that looks a lot better. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and coat the inside. I always start with the roof because I'm gonna finish with the roof. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so that way we can reduce the wind. Go right down the sides. And then cover the field. If you wanted to, you could wipe this down, but I don't see any reason to. Make sure that there's nothing there and nothing there. Any of the overspray that we got all over everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove this foil, set it in the garbage. All right, so there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So for right now, I'm gonna actually leave this out until we get the smoker up to temperature. Now the directions say that this smoker has a temperature range of up to 400 degrees. So I went ahead and set it just a little past half and I'm gonna assume that that'll get us really close to 250 degrees, and then we'll bump it up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer and I'm gonna turn off the cameras. And when that gets to where I want it to be, I'll turn the cameras back on and let you know what that timer said. 
It's been 13 minutes and the smoker is bouncing right about 275. I didn't make any additional adjustments. I just went ahead and left it where it was. And I'm gonna show you two pictures. One picture with the light on, you'll see the little red arrow there on the controller. That means that there's power going to the element. And the second picture is with the little red light off. That means there's no power going to the element. And if you noticed, the gauges are in the same spot. So that means where I set it, landed it right around 275. Now it's going just a little under, but I bet you that the element's gonna turn right back on. Now there will be some variation, especially with such a crude analog thermometer setup. However, in the future, we might go ahead and throw the PID on here and see how it performs. I'm gonna let this go ahead and run for about 30 minutes, and then we're gonna add some smoke. So I'll be back in one second for you, but 30 minutes for me. We are back and it has been just exactly 30 minutes. I noticed that the temperature has dropped down just a little bit to 225. I'm gonna go ahead and open it and look at it. We should see some tacking. So the oil has spread very evenly and yeah, it's very, it's just a little tacky right there. I like that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add smoke. Now I'm only gonna put in a half a wood chip pan and there's a reason why, but I wanna start by saying that it said not to add any flavored wood chips. And I was thinking about that during the break. And my thought is, is that it's okay to add wood chips as long as they're not flavored. Okay, maybe I'm off base, but for your seasoning, only use base flavors. Don't use anything like apple or cherry, unless you're always planning on using that. If you're not planning on using that, use something like hickory. This is a standard flavor that comes with most of the Big Chief smokers, and I also use this as a regular base flavor because hickory is very friendly, especially to beef. Um, you could use mesquite, and alder if you use a lot of it. Alder is a little bit mellower flavor and I would recommend to use a lot of alder if you're gonna do that. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this run. I'll set this to the side and then we're gonna do something else real quick here. Right here, I have a pellet tray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and light that. And I just got this Benzomatic TS-8000, really nice torch, and it's got a fitting on it for a Searsall, but that's not gonna affect this. And there we go. We want to get that lit, but we don't want to overheat the metal because that'll actually damage the tray. And you can see that we are lit there. This thing lights it super, super fast. This torch is for real. So we're going to go ahead and let that burn for a few minutes. And then what we'll do is we want to witness the Cuisinart with its own tray smoking. So that I'm going to set out to the side and we'll be back in about five minutes, but that should only be one second for you. I'm back and it's been about six minutes and we're going on with a little bit of smoke now. I did open the door just now and release it all, but we're going to do it again. Hopefully there's enough in here that you'll be able to see it. I can see just a little bit of traces coming out the back, but not solid enough that you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. Let's see what happens when I open the door here. Just a little bit of smoke coming out. You can see it coming out of the pan though. And it's just running nice and consistently. Over a long period of time, that will be perfect for a standard food. Fill that thing up all the way and let it run. I'm gonna close the door again real quick. <clears throat> now here's the one thing about electric smokers. 
Once they reach a temperature, the element goes off and the smoke stops producing. That's possibly one of the best benefits about the Bradley brand smokers. But with a simple electric smoker like this, or say a Smoke Hollow, or even the master built digitals, same thing is that once they reach temperature, they turn the main element off and the smoke stops. That's why I'm a strong proponent of having a cold smoke generator or some other form to generate smoke. So speaking of that, I'll be right back. Here I have the pellet tray and it's good and going. I'm gonna hold it off a little to the side while I talk here. Now, the wood chips that are in there will be fine for the process and if you filled it up all the way and you wanted to cook a dish, it should work out just great because it'll come on and off and that'll really extend the amount of time that those wood chips will last you. So you won't have to open the door every 30 minutes or so because it won't be smoking constantly. So the smoke time would probably be about 45 minutes total for that whole pan. But with the element going on and off, it's probably gonna last a lot longer than that. And at some point we'll go ahead and test that. But for this process, I wanna get four hours or more of smoke in there. And this will do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in there and hope that there's enough air circulation for it to work. Here, I have a foil tray. I'm gonna put that in there, give it a little bit of bend in the back. Put that on here. Give that a little bit of bend, and this a little bit of bend. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just don't want to get ashes all over in the brand new smoker, especially with a fresh coat of oil, because that oil is draining down the bottom and we'll get into the bottom of the pan. And then what will happen is the ashes will stick to it and then I'll have to clean the whole thing out. And if I can save that trouble by using a little bit of foil, I love to do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for an hour and a half and then it will be done. I will turn the temperature off and let the pellet tray smoke as long as the pellet tray wants to smoke. That will basically wrap up our seasoning video and then this will be ready to cook. First thing that I'm gonna cook though is some smoked cheese because we're long overdue. So thanks for watching. If you saw anything you like in the video, there's affiliate links below. And I gotta tell you that that torch with the sears all is a beast. And that torch, I mean, I torched up a marshmallow with just the torch by itself the other day, and it was like, boom, done. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.